Welcome to Life in the Music Business, a master class with Professor Booch and your host, Bass Face. Hey, what's going on, Professor Booch? Hey, how you doing? Everything's good here, or is they... It's funny because people say, have a good day. You know, to me, I don't want to have a good day. I want to have a great day, you know, I mean, kind of a thing. But I, I catch myself and I, I don't knock them for saying it. Once in a while, they'll say, have a great day. And I say, cool, yeah, you know, have a great day. Now, everything's good here. How's you? Everything's great over here. Okay, you know, great, great full dead. <laughs> From the top, we can just start by saying, that this is going to be a masterclass podcast explaining everything from the music industry and all the business behind it. So Professor Pooch is a legend in the game. Oh, jeez. <laughs> legend makes me sound like I'm dead. <laughs> uh, well, he's, he's alive. Well, I'm grateful dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I've been doing this for 50 years. So, you know, and one of my main things is to pass this information on to everybody else because I ain't doing it for another 50 years. That's for sure. I can guarantee that almost, almost guarantee that. And yeah, we're going to be all over the place. But the idea is this is going to be different than any master class you could possibly picture because most master class, first of all, I started master classes with my quote unquote students. We did it right here at the Pooch Palace back in 2011. And uh, until we couldn't match up schedules, then it became on Facebook. And now we're doing it again. It's fun. But the idea is that, yeah, we're going to pass on a, a lot of knowledge and stuff. But the main thing we're going to be pass on, passing on is how to use that knowledge so it actually helps. We'll tell real stories and what's really going on and stuff like that. And the idea is we're going to have fun, man, and just hope you have a great time. You can always send us questions. Just send questions to ask, like A-S-K, at ProfessorPooch.com. Well, look, uh, you know, like you're, quote, unquote, the student here, even though it's a master class. Uh, how did you get started in the music industry? I grew up being a musician since I was the age of seven. I started playing piano. And music was always something that would just, like, stay with me throughout my entire life. So when I was... I believe it was 2013. Um, I just had graduated high school and I, I decided that I wanted to pursue a, a, a career as an audio engineer. So I taught myself how to produce. I picked back up on my lessons, um, studied uh, contemporary songwriting to be able to understand all the theory and um, formulas to, to writing hit songs. And then from there, I kind of uh, went up more into production and just kind of wanted to disassemble a song and, and make it from scratch with somebody and create a vibe. And that's where I've really focused my ah, five years. Yeah, creative vibe. That's super important. Man, you know, a song should create a mood. As I put it, you know, it should, I call it take... A great song takes you on a mini vacation to another dimension. You know, when you hear a song, it just takes you away someplace. It's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so, but you're doing mostly uh, like producing and stuff right now and uh, producing engineering and a lot of that stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, currently, I'm working at Jungle City Studios out in New York City. Um, I'm just building my way up through that that entire studio. It's a, it's a great place to work. And um, from there, I run my own studio as well as where I'm sitting in right now. Yep. And this is where I have all my clients. We do a lot of production, songwriting, uh, everything. Well, yeah, you show them with your camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I can give you guys a little tour real quick. Uh, real quick, yeah. Uh, like, uh, I got my whole setup right here. As you oh, can, geez, yeah. yeah. Okay, I yeah. got it. <laughs> Switch the camera up on you real quick. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I enjoy it. I love it. I met Professor Pooch about two, three years ago. And from there, we just uh, worked back and forth. You basically just being... A, a, a huge help with my entire career because everything he's given me is just the truth and, and the understanding of what it's like to actually be in this type of business. Well, you know, it's really funny. You said you started out seven or so with the piano. I started out at seven with the violin. And then I realized, first of all, I sucked at it. Uh, I was in the school orchestra because I guess they put anybody in there. And the funny thing is though, or the good thing is, I saw all these other instruments and was able to learn 
you know, what the instruments did, what they sounded like. So it was really helpful. Except by the age of 13, I was into rock and roll, and it's really hard to write rock and roll on a violin. So <laughs> I taught myself guitar, and then eventually taught myself piano and things like that, and I got into producing. The way I got into what I'm doing now and educating and guiding careers, I'm a contract specialist, et cetera, et cetera. I've written books, et cetera. Uh, what happened to me was I had, uh, this goes back, whoa, when I first started, I was with the majors. There was no indie anything back then, okay? I mean, there was cassettes, no, there wasn't even cassettes at the beginning, it was vinyl, and then it became cassettes, whatever. I wrote a song for somebody who was coming out, for somebody else, who was coming out on Columbia Records. And then, you know, I looked at the record because in the old days, the vinyl, it showed the, the name of the song and underneath it in parentheses were the writers. And I noticed, uh, wait a minute here, my name's not on this. So I basically had a choice. This is when I was first starting out as a recording artist. I had a choice. I could, you know, either continue getting screwed, quit the business or learn the business. So I took door number three, and while I was dealing with, you know, learning the business, mostly up in New York and Philadelphia, I'm, I'm a Philly boy, I came from Philly, you know, but I went up to New York and I learned a lot of stuff. Another thing interesting back then was one of the major problems I had, you don't have today. And one of the major problems was they were trying to make me into something I wasn't. And they were trying to make me into this quote unquote pretty boy singer. Well, <laughs> I'm still pretty, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what happened was uh, I'm a rocker. That's just who I am. I, I'm, I'm in all styles of music. The music business is the music business. But I'm a rocker. They're trying to make me into somebody I wasn't. Uh, to make a very, very, very long story, very, very short, how I got into what I do now. Basically, in the 70s, uh, the, sec I had a, the second major producer I had, had was my mentor. His name was Eugene McDaniels, and he was more into R&B and stuff, but he liked my rock and stuff like that. And he was doing stuff for Roberta Flack, Gladys Knight, and a lot of big people at the time. He was my mentor, and he taught me the indie world. He was one of the first indie producers. You know, there wasn't indie back then. There just wasn't until then. But he got upset because he had like five top five songs or five top ten. I know a couple of them hit number one. In the 60s, it's an artist under Gene McDaniels. And you could probably look it up on the YouTube or whatever. But he taught me the way the music business, excuse me, really was. And starting around 1980, I just found that, I, you know, people started coming to me, Pooch, how do you do this? Pooch, how do you do that? Help, Pooch, get me out of this mess, you know. And I found out I liked the behind the scenes better than I liked being, you know, in front of scenes and the touring wasn't for me. It's just who I am. You know, some people are this and I'm me, I'm, you know. So I've been behind the scenes for since the 80s, uh, way behind the scenes until 1991. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I was asked by the Art Institute of Philadelphia to come in and speak to the new people that were starting a music business program. They heard me speak and they say, uh, would you come in and develop a couple programs for us? So I developed their entertainment law, music publishing, artist management, entertainment business, things like that. And then in 2004, uh, I got tired of where I was way behind the closet <laughs> with the majors and stuff helping people, I decided, look, I'm tired of getting people out of messes. Let's prevent them from getting into messes in the first place. So it's since about 2004, uh, I've been, you know, actually I, my site, professorpooch.com, I started in 2001 because I saw which way the industry was going I mean, you'll find the majors are usually 10 years behind on everything. But back then, I saw what was happening. And, you know, and I started a website in 2000. Well, of course, it looks a little more advanced now, but this is the 20th year. And I really love what I do. I love educating. And, yeah, I've written, you know, seven books, of course. Actually, I've written a complete music business uh, college curriculum. 
you know, and the people say, how do you do it? You know, I, I'm older, you know, <laughs> I went through it, I experienced it all, you know, but the important thing we want to bring across to the people listening, we're up to date. We're going to be dealing with 2020. Yeah, it's good to learn from the past, but we need to accept what's happening now. And we got to work with people and you got to accept it. You know, don't live in the past. I've been with people that are big stars, you know, because of who I dealt with in the past and they live in the past. No, man, it's today, man. This is 2020. Let's, let's do our thing. You know, we're in the 2020s, you know, let's do our thing and, you know, let's prepare and create the future, but you got to do it now. You got to be right here in the present time. You can't live in the past. You can't live in the future. <clears throat> you only have this moment right now, make the most of it kind of thing. That's perfect. Yeah, it makes so much sense too, because I mean, especially nowadays where there's so much going on, it's hard for everybody to kind of understand what is being actually asked of them. And I see a lot of people going throughout all their music careers as producers, engineers, songwriters, singers, you know what I mean, artists, the whole the whole nine. And it's 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 all like there's there's no real guideline for people to follow. Everybody just kind of figures it out themselves. And that's when I, when I met Pooch, everything just kind of was like, it was like, I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I knew yeah. what, I started <laughs> to understand more of what was actually going to happen and what needed to happen to be able to make money out of. Well, see, uh, you just said something very important. It's the idea is we're going to, there's going to be a lot of education in this show. At the same point in time, the real trick is learning how to use the education. And we're going to be doing... <clears throat> We'll talk from actual stories, actually what's going on in, in the music industry right now, especially with the virus going on and stuff. And people are, you know, you can sit home and feel sorry for yourself or you can create what you can do now in the virus, you know. And uh, like, for example, I mean, now they're starting, you know, they've been live streaming. Now they're doing ticketed, you know, ticketed live streaming. That's one of the latest things. I mean, you're creative as you're creative in one thing in music, you could be creative elsewise. And what's really, really important, you have to be, you should be, if you want to be really successful, you need, need to be just as creative on the business end as you are on the artistic end. And I should really state you or your artist because we're going to be talking about and to managers, you know, record labels, how to start indie labels, how to start publishing companies. That's where the money is, folks. And lots of different things like that. We're going to be all over the place talking the music and the business. And the idea of this masterclass is, yes, yeah, show you how to use all these things. But we're not going to hand, we don't want to just do like, all right, today we're covering artist development, uh, you know, and stick to that. We're going to talk like, okay, you're a producer. Okay. What are you going to say to that manager? What are you going to say to that artist? What do you want to do after you have that recording? What about going to a label, a production company, or start your own? You know, the idea is I try to, with my clients, especially at associates, get them to own everything. You don't want to just be the songwriter. You want to be the publisher. Just like the artist is the creative person and the manager is their business person. <clears throat> person. Songwriter, you're the creative person. The publishing company is the business side of songwriting. And you could be both. Why not? Build from strength, folks. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing nowadays. A lot of people don't understand what those two things even mean. You know what I mean? Everything yeah. you explain, Pooch, with, from the publishing to all that type of stuff, it's like there's certain things that need to happen to prevent all the, uh, anything bad that could happen to you in your career. Like how, for instance, you, you brought up the story about how you wrote a song that was on a major label that was released on a major label without your name on the credits. So, I mean, that's, that's a real thing that I see on a daily basis of people just not knowing how to... You got to learn the business. Yeah, because I know... You got to learn it. I'm sorry. If you're just going to sit back and be an artist and think you could become a star that way, it ain't going to happen, folks. Or you're going to get screwed. And you don't want to get screwed, man. You, you, you know, you want to become a success. Now, I'm going to define success a little different than most people see it. To me, success... People see success as millions of fans and, you know, a lot of power and stuff. To me, success is doing what you love to do and making a comfortable living at it. You know what I mean? It, why not? You know, enjoy it. 
Uh, by the way, a funny thing is you look at these, a lot of these people doing what they don't want to do to make a lot of money. Interview them, talk to them. You're going to find out they're very unhappy people because they're not doing what they really love to do. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like, you don't, you don't necessarily need, when it comes to success, everybody sees it in diamonds, jewels, women. And it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you, you need, you need to have that inquisitive mind to learn the business and understand what it is that you do for a living and have done for the last 50 years. I mean, it's an incredible feat in one and two, it's the, the amount of people you've helped with your own content and material that you've taken the time to continuously update year by year with audio. Oh, and more, than, more than yearly, believe me, you know, copyright prices change. Oh, went up to this, to that, you know, and I, it's got to be up to date all the time. Yeah, there's so much, there's so many inner working pieces of of the of the puzzle, and the the music is they say is only the the is twenty percent of the entire, hundred percent of the business, but it is the most important twenty percent because every everybody else's careers are based off of that. All the managers, the the booking agents, the publicist, all the all that comes from the music and. If if you're not if you're not in a position to own your own material and and your publishing and understand what licensing is and how to be able to capitalize on a, a negotiation, then it's it, you're gonna be you're gonna be caught up in a few problems right off. A the few, <laughs> a few problems. Yeah, I mean, and by the way, folks, we're gonna be look. Some people want to go with the major. Some people, you know, want to do it stay independent. And, you know, there's middle grounds of like smaller kind of labels and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is the only way you ever are going to become really successful is, first of all, if you side directly with the major, you're not going to see any money, no matter what the promises are. It doesn't matter what they say. It depends on what's on the piece of paper called a contract kind of thing, you know, and the idea is you have to start, the fact of the matter is you have to start out yourself and get the majors to come to you because then you're dealing from strength instead of from weakness. You know, if, if a, example, if you go straight to a label, there's people making, oh man, yeah, they say, oh, they got millions and millions of fans, millions of, but yeah, but they're not making any money unless they make it elsewhere. Because they say, oh, the Spotify's and the Pandora's, they're not paying anything. Yes, they are. They're paying it to the record label. But how much of that record label money is getting down to the actual artist is the key. And the thing is, you want to do it yourself. Do it like great examples are like Macklemore or Arcade Fire, where they were turned down, <clears throat> excuse me, by the majors or whatever. And then they became big on their own. The Record labels come crawling to them. That's what happens, folks. They're going to hear about you if you they're going to they're going, if you create a buzz and have the streams and all that, et cetera, et cetera. YouTube views, you know what I mean. And uh, they're going to come to you, and you're going to be able to deal from strength instead of them saying this is the way it's going to be. You could say, look, I made it with my songs, not the ones you picked from your friends for me to do. You know what I mean? I made it for my songs. You want me? You're taking my songs. Well, you're not, I'm not giving it to you. I'm keeping the publishing. <laughs> you know, things like that. It's just knowledge. It's learning how to use the knowledge is the key. Yeah, knowledge is power unless you know how to use it, you know? I yeah. mean, it's, it's power regardless because, I mean, knowledge is, is the... Is just... Yeah, but yeah, you need the knowledge. And then, see, the way I look at it is, I have all this knowledge because I've been in it for so long, okay? You know, 50 years in the industry, I better have some knowledge or I'm in trouble, okay? You know, uh, I'd probably be out in the street, you know? Yeah. But yeah, you use it, but you have to be able to use the knowledge. And the funny part is, what I do, I'll, I'll show you exactly how I work. I have all this knowledge, it's like on the left side of the brain. But I'm basically a creative person. I'm a songwriter, you know, I was an artist, et cetera, et cetera. So I use my creativity on the right side of the brain and take the knowledge I need and create it to use the way I want to use it, that knowledge to be able to solve problems for myself and other people, you know, so I could help everybody. It's, it's learning how to use that knowledge using creativity. We'll be going through a lot of this. And uh, one thing I got to make really clear right now, 
folks, you're going to find out we're not just going to be talking about music because it's not just music anymore. It's multimedia. Proof of that is real simple. 90% of the people looking for a particular song go to YouTube or YouTube-like video. Case closed. You need to be multi multimedia. You've got to stand out from everybody. I hear so much stuff on the radio. Everything sounds the same. I love it when I can hear, you know, something totally different. To me, a great recording, like a great song, in the first five or six seconds, I know who it is and the name of the song. That's, that's because it. the artist has their own sound, you know? I mean, when you, as soon as you hear a Beatles song, a Rolling Stones song, uh, whatever, okay. Uh, Muse, let's talk about groups that are still around today. You know, Muse, things like that. When they start, da -da 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 you know who it is exactly by the sound. They have their own sound. See, too many people when they practice, okay, we put a band together, we're in practice, we're going to learn the songs. Fine, but that's just a tiny bit. What you need to do is create your own sound. And the I part of that is it's gonna the first couple of songs should take a while because you're not just learning a song, you're creating your sound. And part of that is your image, who you are. Okay. Yeah, Pooch, I feel like that's a good topic to go into. Like how do you how do you see creating a sound in, in the 2020 environment? Uh, we have all different types of genres. We have hip hop, R and B, and uh uh, even EDM, a lot of different pop is a very EDM influence. There's a lot of different things that are on the chart that are kind of, you know what I mean, that's taken over. So what do, you, what do you feel really makes a sound for an artist? Well, it sounds like you. There's no better way to say it. To me, see, here's the thing. Too many people try to be like somebody else, <laughs> okay? And of course, we're all influenced. We all have our influences. I have my influences of what I got into music-wise and stuff like that. Yeah. But you should take maybe these influence. Who are you? What, what, who are you? What, you know, music wise, it, it might be a combination of uh, EDM and rock. It might be, you know, a combination of soul and country. Actually, they both have the same roots, which is interesting if you really go deep into it, you know, but, but there's, I can't tell each individual should be trying to be themselves and just start playing and writing. And oh, one of the big problems I do see today that causes a problem. If you start from a track and then write a song, you're limited because the track limits, I mean, unless you're doing rap, and even with rap, you should have a hook, a chorus or something. But I see so much like this, you know, it, to me, a song should build and build and and because everybody, nobody has an attention span anymore. Okay, it's always uh, every, it's always so just like I was straight up the straight up the middle. You know what I mean? Just to just take the easy route. Easy route won't get you no place except if you want to be a cover band. Yeah. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with being a cover band if that's what you want to do. The question is, decide what you want to do. And too many people don't have a goal. To me. You should have, you know, a lot of times when I meet with people, because I do a lot of career guidance and stuff, and I'll, the first thing I ask them, throws them for a loop. What is your end goal? Because you want to have an end goal of what you want to do, and then you fill in the steps to get to that end goal. But you need a goal. Well, you want to be a hot recording artist doing this and that, and I want to travel around the world. Okay, now we have a starting point. We could start aiming it. Okay, we got to get some great songs. We got to put the right team together. Yeah, and by the way, when you're doing stuff yourself, they call it DIY, do it yourself. Do it yourself equals hobby. You do need help. You can't do everything. The artist is busy enough. They have two major things nowadays. It's not like the old days where you just did the music. Nowadays, you got to create some great music but you have to let your fans in on the experience. The fans want to grow with you nowadays. A real quick history. Up until 1980 and MTV, it was about the music. Fine. 1980, starting with MTV and the videos and stuff like that, it became about the image, you know, the look, the, you know, the whole show, that whatever that image you are. 
to me, image is uh, what you look like, the way you play, your way you are to your audience, the way you talk to them. It, it's you, who you are. Then in the 2000s, it became about the story. Now the story, I mean, you hear it all the time or you see it on the internet or whatever, you'll see, oh, so-and-so was arrested for, hey, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, but they're in the news, folks. By the way, the oldest saying in show business, I don't care if you say something good about me or bad about me, just spell my name right, okay? <laughs> but now in the 2020s, and even it started a few years ago, hmm. but the way it is, especially with social media, the fan, you got to bring them into your family. You got to work with emotionally, bring them, bring their emotions, and you got to be emotional. You can't be afraid of your fans. You, you got to bring them in and make them part of your family. That means when you're on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, it's not just buy this, buy that. You can say, hey man, I was great time. I went into the studio and man, I, I slipped on the damn thing. You know, <laughs> it's taking them into the thing. Yeah. Like when you make music videos, fine. Keep all the footage. The fans like the outtakes as much as the actual video where you're tripping over a guitar chord or you're just having a lot of fun in the studio or standing at the board or if there's a board or whatever, you know. It's a show, man. It's entertainment. You want to, they, the fan wants to feel like they're part of the family, you um, know. They're growing with you and they're along with you on this ride to success. That's what they demand of you. And when you post something on Instagram or whatever, if they say something, respond back. You got to treat them as family. Yes, it takes effort. But real simply, when I guide people, the ones that are successful are the ones that put the effort into it. I can show them how to do it and how to be successful, but they still got to put effort in. They don't want to hear from me. They want to hear from the artist, yeah. you know? Do it themselves. And, you know, you do. That's a huge. Yeah, thing. I mean, yeah, but if I could work with somebody, I stopped working with people that don't put effort into things. But if they don't put the effort into it, they're going nowhere. That's the main thing, right there, is like to be able to take that action is really how you you fulfill your destiny in the end of the day because you are taking that step forward and creating opportunities within that, which then turns around and and it, it helps you excel more than you ever would. But um, you also need you also need a big team behind you too. So that 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 is yeah. Problem. But the team to nowadays is different than the old team. It's there's different definition. In the old days, when I say old days, even ten years ago, fifteen years ago, there was the major label, the manager, the, the, you know that kinds of stuff. Nowadays, your teams are your, your super fans, the ones that are really behind you. That's part of your team. Yeah, you might get a manager, but you want to own everything before you start dealing with the manager or a label. By the way, the way to do it, go on my site, professorpooch.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see free library. Go into the free library. The top article on the right is called Professor Pooch's Three-Step Music Business Career Plan of Action. It tells you all the different things to think about. But the key thing about it is you want to be able to own everything and know what's going on before you either sign with anybody, a manager, coworker, whatever, and also before, if possible, before you put anything out to the public. So you actually, the idea is you want to be respected, protected, and paid. So, you know, the three steps real quick that I go to with my clients is it's all listed how to do it and all that stuff. It's all in the free library, but I personalize it for them. That's the difference. But the first step is your legal and business, you know, so you're taking seriously. The second step is taking these contracts and business and stuff like that and using it to protect yourself, to registering the copyright through your publishing company, through your record label, stuff like that, and using your ASCAP BMIs. We're going to get into all this in details on many episodes, so hang in there. Uh, but the, you know, they're for the songwriter recording, uh, songwriter and publisher, and then there's the sound exchange you want to sign up with for the artist and the record company. But it said there was a lot of different yeah, people to register for protection. And they, but the third step, and what people don't think about, you need a plan of action, folks, a plan of attack, a step-by-step -step 
Let's make sure we didn't forget anything and let's put it all together so you can actually be successful. Also, uh, which will make some people happy, is everything I do in text is also in audio. But I recommend people listen to it, but also read the text because you can't click on links from audio <laughs> kinds of stuff. By the way, my books and courses are there somewhere in the site. And they're in audio also, text and audio. There's seven books. It's all curriculum. You'll see it. And, you know, professorbridge.com, just look around. It's a free site to go through, you know, and there's plenty of free information. How to start a record company, the three-step thing, my state of the music business address, what to do during the virus to keep moving forward, uh, how to license music for TV and film, et cetera, et cetera. It's all free in the free library. Folks, go through it. Have fun. You know, right. learn. You right. know, if you, and if you want to be successful yeah, and be respected, protected, and paid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase right there. It's just... I, that's not my phrase, I don't think. I think it's um, one of my people, I think, came up with it. Uh, uh, Dan. Uh, Dan Baker. <clears throat> <clears throat> I think he came up with it uh, because a lot of times I say so much, I keep talking and we're doing a video. And... Uh, he said, Pooch, you know, you can't have a 30 minute video for just showing one thing, you know? Yeah. So he'll sometimes reduce things. I th I'm pretty sure he was the guy that came up with respected, protected, and paid. I loved it, so I use it. Yeah, I, perfect, yeah. I give him credit, you know, I don't take credit for what I didn't do, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, one more, a couple of quick things since we're basically doing an introductory kind of everything. As you see, we're talking in plain, simple people talk. Mm -hmm. You know, none of that highfalutin stuff, you know, the auditory of the, da, 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 da. if I use any big words, believe me, I'll be happy to explain it. Hey, my contracts are even in English, you know, <laughs> drives lawyers crazy, by the way. Uh, it, it's fun though. They, they'll say, pooch, you can't do that. Cause I deal with a lot of lawyers cause I'm negotiating for people, you know, my clients, et cetera. They say, you can't do it. I say, why not? A contract is just what two or more people will agree to. You just gotta, you know, if you're going to use a a, a lawyer, fine, make sure they're an entertainment lawyer who's really with the music industry, okay? You know, d don't get a, a, a hit and run lawyer to do your music business kind of stuff because they don't, they have to have the knowledge of the music industry to be able to negotiate a contract for the music industry. So anything else, uh, we're gonna have fun. The idea is to have fun with this, tell stories, uh, you know, just have a great time, but learn the industry and, you know, in simple language. And by the way, it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or you already had 10 hit records and stuff. I work for people all day. And it doesn't matter what style of music, what stage of your career, it doesn't matter. We're going to be all over the place. But it, it all works that way. That's real life, folks. That's why this is called life in the music business. We're going to be dealing with all kinds of people. You know, if we like talk about, we're not going to talk about just being a producer. When you're being with a producer, okay, you're dealing with the record company, maybe. How do you deal with this artist in this studio who's not understanding that, you know, it's not just about singing. You can't think. You've got to communicate so you can feel that artist speaking. You know, we're going to get into the creative end, the business end, and the legal end in simple language, folks. People talk. Yeah, exactly. And that's the best, that's the best thing about it. It's, it's, it's more of a laid back vibe. Um, everything is based off of facts. You know what I mean? Over 50 years of proven history that, um, you know what I mean? And we just keep adapting and we're going to be teaching, doing everything that we can to really help the community and push the culture forward in that regard. And um, just continue to, to spread the knowledge, you know? I think we can draw this thing to a close right now because otherwise... I mean, we're probably frying people, but the thing is, we're going to be all over the place. We're going to be covering tons and tons of important topics. We'll get into things about like metadata and things like maybe you don't know about and things like that. We're going to go into a lot of stuff. And if you want to ask any questions, oh, just be specific. Don't say, how do I become a star? Or I will, it will be a 40 hour show of just beginning at it. You know, like, how do I deal with sound exchange? Or this, you know, be specific. You know, well, I ran into a problem with this contract. This person says, sign it or, you know, sign it or leave. And my thing is, hey, is something, you know, 
obviously not only wrong with the contract if they're not going to let you to take it to somebody like me or an entertainment attorney you know there's not only something wrong with the contract there's something wrong with that person giving it to you so we're going to be going through everything you know and it's going to be tons of shows all over the you know we're going to be all over the place but this is how you learn the industry it's not just learning one course and then another course you know we want to have it be fun we'll tell some funny stories and i mean there's tons of funny stories well sometimes they weren't funny for the people when it happened mm -hmm. but you know <laughs> but you know you learn from it that's all you know you can't be afraid of making mistakes if you're afraid of making mistakes you get no place you know they always say that in every joke there's a little bit of truth well yeah and we all do stupid things we all make mistakes it, it, the way i put it is yeah i mean i've caught myself saying some stupid stuff and you know i'm did embarrassing and stuff, but then like, I was told enough through the years, well, a year from now, you'll laugh about it. Well, all I did was I moved the timetable up to now, and if I do something stupid, I just laugh about it. You know, what the heck? You know, I ain't waiting a year to laugh about it. You know, whatever happened, whatever I said, whatever I did, it's past tense. You yeah. can't change it. You know what I mean? You just got to deal with it and just understand the what you did and just kind of learn from it and move on you know what i mean you can't you yeah well that's that's it you don't fail until you quit failing is just giving you a course correction okay this way or thing didn't work let's make an adjustment the greatest example of that is edison he created the light bulb it took him this is true look it up ten thousand mistakes until he created a light bulb that was commercially viable that actually could go out there. 10,000 mistakes. Right. If you don't make mistakes, it means you're not living, you're not doing anything. The logical thing that it would be to think that the 10,000 mistakes equates to 10,000 hours. But in all reality, he probably had about, back, especially back in that time, he probably had like 50,000 hours of time just to get that one final product that really just proved that he could, he could be a staple of the industry. You know? Yeah, I'd love to ask him sometime, but that's gonna be a little difficult. <laughs> but yeah, he ended up creating quite a lot of stuff and you know, things like that. So that is that Pooch. Uh, this is the, the end of the life in the music business. The beginning of, well, the beginning of the life in the music business. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's the end of this show. Yeah. But uh Yes, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching. Tune in for the next episode.